still on the way or this is just it look look your neighbors you know your friends are coming but still not here is there any international student okay all right too bad aku marah kau macam tak bahasa Melayu nanti dia tak faham Yeah, should be fine. All right. Okay. Um, you will have this copy, physical copy. I know that um, I've given to you uh, online. So uh, before we go um, right into the lessons, whatever. Uh, so welcome to what class is this? Okay. Um, Hopefully, you are not joining this to fill in your schedule timetable, okay? Um, I know that most most of the undergrads, um, you are in your maybe final semester, or oh no, final year, and got some postgraduate as well. I just want to see um, who are postgraduates? Postgraduate student? Just, just three? Okay, all right, okay. So the rest of you are on here, all right. Um, <clears throat> the, thing, the thing about this um, course is this semester full of Monday holidays, okay? And the first, this first Monday holiday already happened um, earlier this week, right? So this kind of makes things a bit difficult if we are to skip all the Monday classes. If we skip all the Monday classes, meaning that you are going to lose five lectures. That's over a month, actually, without, without any class. Okay. The original plan is because I have things to do um, in December and I'm actually quite um, swamp uh, with some research work. So I need to somewhat finish this creatively before um, December. I mean about the lectures. Okay. For your practicals, you will be given um, two mini projects that you can do throughout the semesters because experiment takes time. Okay. You need to learn, you need to plan, you need to fight with your friends and so on. Who's right, who's wrong. Maybe you need to repeat. Okay. Um, so do expect that we are going to have replacement classes. Not to cater for my needs to finish everything before December or by December. But also to cater for all these public holidays. Okay. I don't think we should be skipping classes for too many, okay? Five weeks is just too much, okay? All right, so have you read this? Okay, so um, the system with my class is, um, I will put things on Putra Blast from time to time, but the thing is, my Putra Blast account kind of not agreeing with me. They keep on sending me to somewhere else even though the URL looks the same, okay? So that's why um, I will use um, my own personal cloud storage, but you still have the access to it, okay? So follow the link, and have you opened the link, okay? So if you're not familiar with OneDrive, maybe go to YouTube and see what um, that is all about, okay? It's, it's just a cloud storage, okay? 
The reason I use OneDrive because most of us using Windows and it's embedded in the operating system of your computer. Okay, it's 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 much smoother compared to uh, Google Drive in in many ways. So this should be even though you are done with your semesters, you can go back to the online cloud folder to get back all your materials. In Fustra Blast, many times when the semester is over, that's it. Many students cannot go back and, and get all the materials, okay? So let's not make that um, to happen easily, right? Um, have you given to hear me to Xerox? Okay, all right. So we will have um, not really a lecture, but an overview. What are you going to deal with for the rest of the semester, all right? Why this is important? <clears throat> Uh, well, you have two weeks, right, to drop in, to drop out of the classes, okay? So I want to give you a glimpse of what is coming towards you. Well, not to scare you, maybe, I want to scare you, um, but to prep you. Throughout this semester, this is the thing that you are going to be dealing with. Is it difficult? Um, I think difficult people always associate with mathematics, right? I will try not to go too much into the mathematics. If there are mathematics present, it's very minimum. You only have to deal it maybe one or two weeks only. Just that, okay? Um, have you taken crop physiology or plant physiology before? All of you, okay? No, why not? What happened? What? Uh, sorry? I never do experiment before. You, you, you don't want to do experiment? Never do experiment before. You never do experiment before? Okay. Are you undergraduate? No? Postgraduate? What, what level are you in? Uh, for other, for the ornamental plants. Ornamental plants? Horticulture, you mean? All right, okay, okay, no, not to worry. All right. Um, I don't say that without the prerequisite of plant physiology, you cannot take this, okay? But bear in mind, you need to work a bit harder to grasp all the things that are coming towards you, okay? Um, are you undergraduate or postgraduate? Postgraduate? Um, do you... All right, all right, okay. So you are taking this because it's related to your research? No. Oh, we need a translator. My English is not that good. So you have to do research, right? Yeah. Okay. So is, it, is, is that why you are taking this subject? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Is there any particular research needs that you want me to address? Uh, well, your research, what is that about? Uh, tough grass. Tough grass? Yeah. Okay, tough grass. Okay, is there anything particular you would like to learn from physiology yeah. to help with your research? Yeah. No, okay, good. <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay. It's all right, it's all right. I tell you one thing. Um, hopefully, you all become a scientist. Eighty-five percent of the scientists that I know are not able to teach properly. They are super smart, super genius, can do many amazing things, but when it comes to teaching, almost almost all will like not able to do anything much about it. Teaching is something else. Okay, it's really something else. Okay, imagine how you're going to deal with just now. <laughs> that, that's that's gonna be uh, uh, some, something um, um, to ponder about. Okay, um, just just look at here. Um, 
we have already lost one week, uh, but not to worry, worry too much about the cell uh, architecture and stuff. This is just more like review, okay? Review, but of course, to jolt your memory and to give you some new information about the cells that you have not dealt with before, okay? Then we are going to, to go progressively into what the genome is like. Maybe, maybe you have heard about that before, but do not know what's that all about. And then you might wonder, after you have looked at all of this, how is it related to physiology? I know physiology at your fundamental level, this is not something that you dealt with. Okay? But actually, physiology is understanding how the cells, how the tissue function. Even the medical student, they have to take the human physiology class. Since you are crop science agriculture student, you have to deal with crop physiology. So physiology, we understand how the organism functions. And we know in an organism, there are systems, there are organs, there are tissues, how they function individually and also how they function collectively to make you function as a specified individual. Even within the same species, homo sapiens, you, human, for example, men and women, do they function similarly? Almost the same? Almost the same? Can you do things that each other cannot do? Yes, maybe. That's a very on the fence answer. <clears throat> Even within the same species, you have special or unique functions depending on your gender. You're still the same species. People still call you human, homo sapiens. But because of the hormones, because of the native biochemical reactions in your body, it makes you unique. Don't go that far even. Let's take you male and male, one male from Africa and one male from the Japan. Take two males. If you go into their physiological function, even though if you look on the surface, they look pretty much the same, you will see that this African guy can actually tolerate heat well beyond the capacity of the Japanese guy. Why? By heat, not only the, the actual temperature, okay? By, act, by being <laughs> desiccated under the scorching sun. African people, they have no problem with that. They can work in, in, in the farm all day long. Even you can't do it. So, can you say that their physiology is the same? Same but Same, same, but, dif same but different. So these are called um, specialization, okay? Even if you compare among yourself, among your friends, you'll see that some people don't need a lot of sleep. Some people need very less of sleep, okay? So the basic of the physiology is the same, the fundamental, but the details of it, the amount of chemicals released in the body is different. The timing of the chemicals released in the body is different. So that will make you having unique function or you don't have that function. All right. So the basic premise is the same. So we are playing around with the dosage or the value chemical in the, in the body and also the timing. All right. So this all will make all the difference. Okay. There are many kind of combinations that can, we can go on about, all right? So, hopefully, with that kind of understanding, you will understand that even within the same plants, when you are doing experiment, you will see variations. Don't get too surprised easily, okay? 
just look you and your brother already look different so there is something very individual very super specific that is happening at the physiological level and when you do experiment when you do research this is something that you need to discuss that's why we do discussion in in scientific writing we are looking for the potential mechanism maybe somebody has done something before or maybe some someone has um, a theory or hypothesis about it All right okay so let's continue with this um can you help angel me because that's booklet you need to so you're going to get this this has been printed into the booklet form so you just get this just fold it so it will turn into booklet like this but of course you cannot look on the portrait mode you need to turn it into the um, landscape mode right oh what's that okay then we're going to learn about the signals and transduction okay after we have learned about the cell wall okay, you will see that this thing coming one after another then we we go to see what kind of signals they were talking about i will try to relate with the human function so that you can better appreciate this not entirely the same but the basic premise is there do you think human and plants are similar in any regards no yes why 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 not similar some plants can move some plants this year you see it here after one year you see it's two meter away some plants can move there are walking trees but it's of course it's not as fast as you otherwise they will have joined the mar marathon and olympics did you know that there are walking plants yeah you can look it up there uh there, there is a walking plant um usually in the mangrove area the swamp area so the plant kind of growing the roots toward the place they want to go and then whatever root that is left behind on the side that they do not want to live anymore they just kill it they kill it can you kill off your hand your limb at will yeah plants can do that okay which you will learn as well in the final lesson the program cell death right <clears throat> okay yeah and then there is a special topic that i have chosen about the floral initiation and development this is going to help you with the understanding of your experiment i told you just now you will be dealing with a mini project right so this mini project are going to deal with a flower experiment okay so to understand flower actually um, in our country this is something not greatly um, explored okay it's true people in horticulture they do a lot of works regarding the flowering but flowering for the ornamental floriculture kind of purpose not for the production of um, food like what the agriculture people do okay so we're going to look into that all right <clears throat> so i'm going to go through all of this so that you know what you're dealing with um, for the rest of the semester um, maybe i just wait for for that thing to come up so that you can scribble on yeah i take each one booklet that's coming <coughs> feel 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 free to to ask things okay along the way So when, when you have been in learning about the things more than once, 
the coming times that you are learning about it, like what you are dealing with now, you need to be able to see the overview of things. Okay. I think we can all agree. You cannot learn everything about physiology in one semester. Okay. So the whole purpose of this uh, course is to give you exposure and awareness. There are things, there are knowledge, discipline, sub-discipline that, that are actually in existence that can be helpful to explain your own research that is useful to help you with discussion. Okay, so when you have received the awareness, the exposure about various important things in physiology, you can have a go at your own. Okay, pretty much when we learn something, we don't get to learn in great detail whenever we are in lecture or in classes. Okay, we can do that on our own. But before you can do it on your own, you must have the basic, the fundamentals what you need to look for and what is the overview of the subject that you are dealing with okay so about the plant and cell architecture this is very very fundamental something that you need to be familiar with about the cell architecture okay so i hope all of you have seen this before or have you not seen it what's this plant cell how is it plant cell differ from the animal cell? Cell walls. Cell walls. Then? Chloroplast. Then? Look at the paramecium. Remember paramecium? You know amoeba, paramecium, we learn in your school, school time? Look at the paramecium. How can it move? I remember somebody called amoeba. Why? Why call it that way? <laughs> the spelling might sound amoy. Don't call it amoy. It's not amoy. Amoy would be very insulted because she is not look like that. The paramecium. It can move, right? Why? Why? Why can it move? This thing? What is this? Flagella. Yeah, flagella. Something at the back here. Okay. Flagella. Flagella or cilium. All right? Okay. So, have the basic understanding of we know there are many organisms on this planet and the basic living unit is the cells and since you are dealing with cells of the plants plants have special things that other cells do not have and vice versa okay so the cell wall we are going to go into great details i just want to highlight about this thing about the endomembrane system but when, when because when i check um with much of your syllabus much of it did not deal with this endomembrane system. Have you heard this before? The endomembrane system. So you see, when it says endomembrane system, it means membranes inside the cell already. The cell is bounded by plasma membrane. Okay, okay that is the membrane, the boundary membrane surrounding of everything. Inside this membrane, there are further membranes, micro-membranes. And these membranes are actually... Uh, forming interrelated structure okay for example like what we are having here so you have your nucle nucleus that's a membrane or you call it organelles and then you have this what's this er not emergency room endoplasmic reticulum okay so all of these kind of um, interconnected um, to form vesicle or special products you can see that when you are talking about endomembrane system the organelles that are being highlighted here are only these organelles where are mitochondria where are chloroplasts they are excluded from this story 
okay? Because the products from this chloroplast and mitochondria not necessarily being used right after one another. But for the case of this um, vesicle, have you ever wondered how the plasma membrane is built? The plasma membrane is containing everything inside the cell, but how is it built? Is it built later? Is it built before? How, how that is being, how that come to happen? Okay, what if it's broken? What if the cell wants to get bigger? So this is how the plasma membrane is repaired or to become bigger, okay? With this action from the nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum, um, Golgi apparatus, and so on. Um, we can go into detail here, but I just want to show that this system is not in the syllabus that you're usually dealing with, all right? Okay, and then um, there is a concept of plant cytoskeleton. <clears throat> you can see that from, from this um, lessons that I have selected. These are the lessons that I've selected based on many years. I look at the postgraduate student seminar, dealing with the Viva student, things that are fundamental that our students kind of lacking the knowledge. This is very basic. Okay, so whatever that I'm addressing here to other, you know, international university, all students know this, but our student kind of do not necessarily, you know, have awareness about it, okay? Cytoskeleton. <clears throat> the name itself is skeleton. So what do you think it does? So you have your cells. You have your cells. Your plant cell like this. There is a soup in here. There is a soup here. And then you have your organelles. You have your nucleus, you have your uh, mitochondria, you have your chloroplast, and so on. These things, they are not floating freely, randomly. Okay? They are actually on a, you can think of, think of it like the rail system. They have the structure. This structure are actually specialized proteins. Okay, so these are the things that kind of attach to the plasma membrane and then attach to the organelles to keep everything in place or to move things whenever they are needed. Pretty much like your own skeleton. Your skeleton, your bones. Why, why do you need your bones and your skeleton? For what? For what purpose? For the support, yeah, your body framework. What else? For the movement, yeah. Can you move from here to the bus stop if you do not have leg bones? Or maybe you can, I still got my hands. <laughs> that you will look like a crab. So, structure is not just to give you a shape, a morph, a morphology, but also to help with the movement. In this case, this cell do not need to move to go to school. No, but to move the components of the cells, okay? Many textbooks, the cartoon depiction of the cells, especially when it comes to photosynthesis, is actually a bit incorrect. You will always see that the chloroplast kind of floating about, right, in the book, in the textbook. The truth is, when the photosynthesis is actively happening, the chloroplast is actually oppressed on the plasma membrane, very close to the side of the cell wall, like this, oppressed. They are squeezed against the wall. Why? If they are floating away from this, it will take further journey for the CO2 to arrive and get into the chloroplast. And nature is not that stupid. Why, why make the chloroplast away from the CO2? CO2 is coming this way, right? For the photosynthesis. So chloroplast, they are oppressed against the wall so that the journey of CO2 is minimized 
and the chloroplastic CO2 concentration can remain high. If it's not high, Kelvin cycle, the Rubisco, the enzyme in the Kelvin cycle cannot fix CO2 and you do not get the sugar. Low CO2, high CO2, different events will happen. When the, the CO2 is high, there are many ways that the plants do in, in order to ensure that CO2 is high inside chloroplast. One of the ways is to ensure that chloroplast are pressed against the wall. When this happens, you will get your sugar. Okay, thanks to the carbon fixation. But the moment CO2 going down, you have now in the cell relatively high oxygen. This thing is not going to happen. You will get photorespiration. Photorespiration. And guess what? Photorespiration, it used up ATP, but no sugar. So it's a metabolically a wasteful process. Do you want photorespiration or do you want carbon fixation? Fixation, of course, because you want the product of your, because without, without assimilation, how are you going to get your biomass produced? If your plants, your crops cannot produce biomass, how are you going to get your harvest? You wait for four months, your plants still look the same two months ago. Because it's been busy doing all the photorespiration, okay? So this, this thing, thank you to the cytoskeleton to move organelles about so that they are in the correct position, okay? All right. However, plants, they do not have the willpower or so on. You can control your bones to go to IOI or to come to class, right? So there is another extra element to um, the, the human, okay? Your willpower, right? Okay, and then you can see that for the cytoskeleton, there are their own components like the microtubule, actin filament, and intermediate filament. You know what? Your cells have these things as well, okay? <clears throat> but the difference is your cells in your body can move about in great distance. Look at your red blood cells. Can they move from your head to your toe? Plant cells in the leaf, can it move to the root? Why not? In, this, in the middle of the cell, so cells in plant, they are having this thing, middle lamella. So this thing kind of like a cement. So plant cells are not like human cells. Plant cells are pretty much, they are cemented together, okay? So you, you don't suddenly find leaf cells in the stem cell or in the root cell or suddenly in the flower cell, okay? But your blood cell, you can find it, hey, just now you are here, now you are, you are in the hand because we have circulatory system. So what runs up your circulatory system? What, what organ runs your circulatory system? That is the structure to deliver the components of the circulatory system. What organ? Heart. You need a pump for that. Okay? So, better appreciate this. Uh, okay? Uh -huh. Then you know why heart is very important. Okay, and finally, for this thing, we, you can see that um, because the plants cannot move the cells out and about, they do need even more specialized cells than us, okay? So you can see that some, some cells, um, they can be present, all of them, in one organ. Like in us, when we are talking about the heart organ, your heart, you don't find bone cells in your heart, the osteocyte. You know, the, the cell of the bone is called osteocyte. 
you don't find osteocyte in your heart because that's not how human works okay what do you find in your heart muscle cells myocardial cells all the cells that help the, the heart to run but in a leaf for example you can find all of this okay you can find various kind of cells and tissue in one organ okay it's pretty much like you have a heart but you have the nerve cell you have the the, the osteocyte you have bone marrow everything in, in in your heart okay why again uh so because plants uh, they kind of works a bit differently than human so what are the cells that you need to know so you need to know there are cells that act as a ground cells meaning that there are cells that are there to keep things as food reserve or cells that contain lots of chloroplasts to do photosynthesis okay so these cells are called the parenchyma or parenchyma some people pronounce it so parenchyma cells are the ground cell or the ground tissue you can think of it equivalent to you as your flesh you know you got to meet the flesh right yeah this is pretty much it and some parenchyma cells they have chloroplasts okay and they can be called mesophyll cells okay depending on the shape or the location of the mesophyll cells um, they are known as the palisade mesophyll cell or the spongy mesophyll cell okay mesophyll meso means in the middle phyll p h y l l it means what leaf leaf so you know that these cells are actually in between the leaf layer if you have the cross section of the leaf so this is the top part this is the bottom part of the leaf so the top part what do you call it a back cell the bottom part a back cell so since the, the cell called mesophyll meso mean fill is leaf there will be never mesophyll here it must be somewhere in between okay so this is something to help you with the labeling later and to to identify your microscope micrograph pictures and images okay all right then what what else do you have so you have um so these cells can um have function when they undergo a bit of thinnings like this uh cholenchyma cells okay so cholenchyma cells are the cells that um meant for structure rigidity um, of the cells okay so i think there is a word here yeah if you have lots of mesophyll cell one cell a bunch of cell make what tissue right so one you call mesophyll when you have a bunch of mesophyll it's called chlorenchyma it's not the same as um, calling chyma okay this is a bunch of mesophyll cell this is the cells for support uh, I'm highlighting this because the spelling kind of look similar, okay? And then we have the sclerenchyma. Sclerenchyma, um, highly lignified cells, okay? Um, there are cells, but they have been reduced. They are concentrated to the point they feel like stones, okay? So they, they, they form a structure like sclerites. Sclerites. Um, I think we you have it you have eaten this before, you know apple, you know pear, right in the middle. How does it feel? Is it as soft as the outside flesh? Yeah, the hard part, the the brittle, the gritty part in the middle of the apple and pear, that is the sclerenchyma, the sclerites. They used to be a cell, plumpy, plump cells, but now they have been reduced. So that's why you feel a, a bit gritty. Okay. Yeah, and then you have the xylem. 
to conduct water, minerals, ions, and also you have the phloem. Okay, xylem, dead, phloem, living. Please remember that. Okay, all right. Okay, so we go on to the um, when you're done with that, we, we will see about the, the genome structure and gene expression. <coughs> um, for some reason, in this faculty, very hardly people learn about the gene expression because we are pretty much into agronomy without taking the time to understand at the molecular cellular level what is going on. Okay. I'll tell you one thing. It's very super expensive to set up a molecular lab. Okay. And our country, for some reason, um, they are kind of being stingy about it. Okay. If you go to developed countries um, like Korea, you know, like, like European countries, their molecular labs are very highly equipped. Okay. Because to study this, this is something that's like super small. Okay, to the point you you 95% 90, of the time you are imagining things. Okay, but this will help you to understand after you have given treatments to your plants, your plants is behaving or performing in certain ways at the cellular level, what is happening? What is being turned on? The genes, what is being turned off, All right? When I say gene, Any, anybody not sure what that actually means? So small, I'm paham. Eh, tak cakap Melayu. So everybody got it. Got this. What's what's the different um, gene, genome, genetic, or maybe you finally want to this to me <laughs> but um you know you have a cooking book so you have a cooking book and this cooking book is meant for your family right i have my super secret fam, um, cooking book that will make my family happy so your cooking book got chapters okay the chapters for the breakfast, the chapter for the dinner, tea time, brunch, and so on, all right? So the, the entirety of your cooking book to make your family happy, that is your genome, okay? That is your genome, okay? Um, the location the location of your specific recipe to do something, for example, you want to make a dessert for, for, for your family. So the location of it will be uh, what we call as in the, sorry, the chapter is actually equivalent to the chromosome. Okay. So you have genome, your cooking book, and then you have chapters. Chapters are actually your chromosome. How many chromosomes do you have in your body, in your cell? How many? Do you have chromosome? You have, do, do you have or do you not have chromosome? Uh, not have. You, you what? Not have. Not have? You don't have chromosome? Oh, I'm so worried. <laughs> I, 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 I have a feeling somebody's going to cry a lot this semester. Do you have chromosome? How many chromosome you have? 23? 23 or 24? 23. 23? Pass? Why pass? Why? Yeah. Why pass? Because from both parents. Yeah, from paternal and maternal inheritance. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. So you have 23 chromosome and they are numbered. Chromosome 1, 2, 3, all the way until, until the end. So that is the chapter. Okay. In the chapter, you will have your recipe. Okay. Recipe to make um, what is it? Uh, dessert. So that recipe is actually your gene. This is your recipe to make it. All right. What about the genetics? This is actually how do you deal with all of this information in your cookbook? So this is uh, specific for, it can be the genetic of your um, specific species. It can be the genetic um, of maybe certain kingdom. Or it can be the genetic of modified organism. So the genetics you study, how these things interact within the cells when certain things happen from the outside, meaning that you have a cookbook, okay? If your family is happy, you are looking at certain chapters only to make some special happy dessert or dishes, cuisines. But on the day that your families are sad because grandma just saw the light, are you going to, uh, um, uh, to, to make a cake? So, what do you do? I do not know. I mean, like, we just eat, right? <laughs> so, depending on the occasion, okay, I'm talking about the occasions, just because your chapters, your chromosome got 23, not 23 is being used all at once, depending on the occasion. Some occasion, it is hot outside, it is cold outside, maybe 11 out of 23 chapters are being used to make sure that you are still functioning as an organism. Okay? So that is the genetic. It studies how the environmental um, outside factors are affecting you as an organism. Okay? Not only external factors, it's always the internal factors as well. So this is kind of all interrelated so that some genes can be turned on and turned off so that you can function properly. Okay? You got it? You got it? All right. Good. What about this? I think this is what you want to do to me now. Fine. All right. Okay. The reason we are having this, uh, I want to tell you, the DNA, the basic unit of your inheritance for plants, for you, is actually not only present in the nucleus, okay? So you have your DNA in the nucleus. Um, we call it the nuclear genomes, okay? Have your understanding correct, okay? You need to know now the terminologies like chromosome, chromatin, and also the chromatid, okay? What's with all of these um, terminologies? This is to show the level of packaging of your DNA inside your cells, okay? We start with the DNA double strand like this. This is the simplest form of it. You just have double strand of your DNA, okay? So do we, we just call this DNA strand. No packing happening just yet. So your DNA can actually wrap around a special protein called histone so that if you look at it, it looks like beads on strings. And now it is called the nucleosome, like this. And this nucleosome, they can start to pack upon one another. And then when this happens, now it is called what? Chromatin. That's the next, next level. So this chromatin, they can further condense. Condense means they are 
coiling with each other and then they are compressed, saving space. Okay, so this super coiling will give rise to chromatid. Okay, so chromatid is actually the collection of your genome that is actually possible for that cell. All of it. You are familiar with chromosome looking like this, right? Most of the time, this is not the shape of the chromosome. This is actually the look of the chromosome when it is ready to duplicate. The cell is ready to duplicate. Most of the time, it looks like this. Just this. Okay? So this is the chromatid. When the cell is ready to divide in the cell cycle, this will duplicate. Now you will have two sister chromatids. Don't ask me why they don't call it brothers. My suspect is the scientist who described this is a lady. Go sister. So they call it sister chromatids and actually this kind of equivalent kind of we call it chromosome. And this is the part that is actually visible under the microscope easily because the reason they call it chromosome because this thing the moment it has got two pairs, it can be colored and then visualized under the microscope. Chroma means color. Som, samni, means body. Colored bodies. You cannot color chromatin. You cannot color DNA strand. No, you cannot do that. Even if you can, the microscope resolution is just not that great to pick up the signals. But the moment it has condensed, like that way, you can color it and see the chromosome. Okay? Yeah, pretty much like this. Okay. Now, about the other locations of the DNA. Remember, in your body, this is always happening. Scientists do not have actual answer, but they have a theory. It is called the endosymbiotic theory. Have you heard this before? No? Yes? I'm afraid to, 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 ask, to, to ask that side of the kid. <laughs> um, this endosymbiotic theory, um, how the story goes? Um, once upon a time, there was a lonely cell just roaming about um, in the pond. All right? So this cell is very hungry. However, this cell do not know how to make food. And also, do not know how to cook, do, uh, know nothing like you. So just float about, just float about, and if there is a food nearby, they just absorb it, which is very inefficient because in order to reproduce, the cells require lots of energy, right? Yeah. So without having a special function to make food or to gather energy, the ability of this lonely cell is very limited. Okay. On the other side of the pond, there is another set of lonely cells. This lonely cell, like Kiasu know it all, know how to make energy, know how to use all the resources and so on. However, it's, it's so small. It's too small and it cannot protect itself. So because it's Kiasu, do you like your Kiasu friend? You want to shoot, uh, beat the hell out of, 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 of your friend, right? So they got bitten all the time got beaten, got eaten, got kicked out, everything happened a lot. So, lonely and hated, lonely and kind of dysfunctional. Sort of. Yeah, you can refer back to the story here. And one fine day, due to the destiny, or they kind of floating about and then they kind of are close to each other. And they kind of share the story of their life how lonely and how dysfunctional I am, how lonely and how kiosu and hated I am. So they say that, oh, you know what? You have something I want. You have something I want. Um, they kind of have a small discussion. Actually, we can be of benefit to each other, complement each other. So they make the agreement. You know what? Why don't I eat you and you stay inside of me? 
so that I can have your function. It's pretty much like transformer, right? Something you got extra power. So this lonely and kiasu um, uh, um, cell get eaten by these lonely big cells, and then they kind of fuse and coexist together. All right, and it, that gives rise to the animal cells in you right now. And this cell is what becoming the mitochondria. Super, very good at gathering and making energy. So that is animal cell. So that is the first event in the endosymbiotic theory. All right. So, and then there is, um, however, in the other side of the pond, there is um, another green kiasu. Still kind of like, oh, well, very so far away, it came late to the story later. Kind of floating about, you know, pretty much having the same kiasu with the first cell. But this guy, is even hated because not only that it can utilize all the energy and materials around it, it can capture energy from the sun. So the second, the second Kiasu guy. So this, this, the green, the green Kiasu guy somewhat meet with the cells that have lived in harmony. So this cell now kind of, oh, we feel you, bro. We used to be that. We used to be separate. We used to be that. Uh, and, and why are you green? Or did they have all this discussion? You know what? Since I am big, why don't you get in so that I have another superpower? So this green kiasu get eaten and it stays inside. So you, and it becomes now the plant cells that you know about. Hey. <laughs> you know, if other scientists listen to this story, yeah, they, they will scream at me. <laughs> Yes. Is this a new theory or theory? Um, theory based on evidence. Based on evidence. Because scientists do not have time travel machine. However, they have lots of, of evidence to support this theory. You see, whenever scientists, not only in biology, even in engineering or any other field of sciences, when they come up with a theory, the theory must be backed or supported by abundance of evidence or um, uh, finding, maybe natural finding or experimental finding, then it can become a theory. Theory, if it, it is able to make, uh, to be tested over and over again, to be proved by independent bodies, that will become a knowledge. All right? But so now, this thing, how are you going to test this? You want to ask the Kiasu guy? I think the, the very lucky answer is, I don't know. Like some grandma a long time ago did this. I just stay inside now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Used to be a bacteria. Um, we call it bacteria, but nobody can be certain. It can be some kind of protist or some kind of um, ancestor of that lonely amoeba. It can be anything. It can be. A, but the idea is that, right? So that's why DNA in plant cells present in three locations, the nucleus, the mitochondria, and also the chloroplast, all right? So in mitochondria, okay, this is the mitochondria that you are familiar with. The difference is the uh, DNA that are present in mitochondria, they are not in the chromatic form like this. Oops. No, they are in the circular form, okay? Circular form. Yeah, so this circular form, the specific, specific name for that is called plasmid. Circular DNA, all right? Pretty much like this, all right? Mitochondrial DNA is special, specially maternally inherited. Your dad doesn't have any say in your mitochondria. That's purely from mom. Okay, so this is actually a good indication if you want to be prepared about your, um, you know, golden age situation. If you want to see at the age of later in life, maybe 80, 90, whatever, 
how am I going to look like? Am I going to be a couch potato, sit back ridden, you know, play majo, not do anything else? Or I'm going to be super he uh, happy, healthy, happy life, you know, climb up the mountains and so on? Look at your grammar. Look at your grammar. If your grandma, your, your mom, your aunties, they are just say, staying around, playing majo, never want to go anywhere, pretty much that's the energy that you're going to have. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even refuse to make quick up it during uh, uh, New Year. Pretty much, pretty much that, that's going to happen. But if your grandma and your mom's very active, go to the whole village, terrorize people, let's make a kue, kue bangkit, whatever, kue bakul. Don't, don't care, don't care about the fire. I'll just do all the chopping of the wood myself. That's how active you're going to be. Okay? It's very right. You can predict the picture now. How, so, how, how, how's, how's grandma doing? <laughs> how's grandma doing? Don't have to grandma. Maybe, 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 maybe grandma got sacrificed or somewhere. Maybe it's not around. You got aunties, right? You got aunties, you got moms. Yeah. Look at them. Look at them. Yeah. Why did, actually, this is good because if you see something not optimum, you can do something at the early age so that... Some, something that you don't want to happen can be prevented okay i'm not saying what exactly there are things in certain food that you can regularly eat and certain things that you can regularly routinely do to ensure continuous and improved mitochondrial biogenesis meaning that even though you have a bad genetics bad genome you can still somewhat overcome this to a certain degree due to your lifestyle and also the things that you eat. Okay? What is that? <laughs> I just said just now, right? I give you the awareness. It's for you to search it out. Right? Okay. Good. Yeah. And finally, you have the... Um, uh, DNA in the chloroplast. Uh, mostly, DNA in chloroplast function for, of course, photosynthesis. You can see, uh, I think, I know it's very um, small. So, the all the structure, the subunits in the chloroplast um, components, like the, in the photosystem, ATP synthase, and ADH, dehydrogenase, all of these enzyme um, proteins, the recipe to do the proteins actually come from the uh, chloroplast, okay? They can come solely, purely from the chloroplast or they can come uh, half from chloroplast, half from the nucleus. And then they kind of join together. Meaning that nuclear, uh, nucleus genes alone cannot make that specific protein. It must come from the chloroplast as well. The good example is Rubisco. Okay, some proteins, uh, they have uh, the large subunits body and the small subunits body. And each this body, we call it uh, the dimer. So they must be assembled together. Yeah, the recipe of each unit can come from any one of these mitochondrial, nuclear, or um, chloroplastic DNA. Okay. What happens if you have chloroplast? Hmm. Will you look green? Yes. There, um, I, there, there, there is a turtle that I know that have a, a chloroplast in the cell at the, at the back because it's kind, of, kind of like a symbiotic um, event in the modern world. Yeah. But that's actually only happened very rarely. Yeah, there is a turtle. You know, turtle sometimes uh, exposed, it looks very green, right? Yeah. Sometimes um, all these um, cyanobacteria, they just want, you know what? We'll make a home here. Yeah. It's very expensive anyway now. Yeah. Here looks nice. That's getting. All right. Okay. Then you are going to learn about the cell wall. Okay. I will also share with you this information about the cell wall because this is very highly involved with um, 
growth. You know, your crop in the field grow, gets bigger. They, they grow and develop. What's the difference? Plant growth and plant development. What's the difference? Grow is what? The enlargement of size. Okay, grow is enlargement size. What about development? Okay, um, if you want to define something, better not use the word again in the definition. So development is actually the changing of face or the morphology. Growth is reversible. Cells that used to be big can actually become smaller, maybe lose water or something, or get reduced like the sclerenchyma just now. Okay, so growth is actually um, can reverse to some degree. Things that expand can condense. Development, the moment it has changed phase, that is irreversible. For example, the meristem cells that has developed and differentiated into a flower cells, can it reverse back to the meristem cell? No, because the development event has occurred and it is irreversible, right? Okay. So growth is pretty much dealing with the enlargement, the enlargement, the elongation to make things bigger, all right? And maybe um, the division as well. Yeah, development, it involves um, differentiation. Cells differentiate or maturing to become something else so that the organism can enter a new phase. If your cells do not develop and differentiate, you will, still, you will stay as a baby forever. And there is a syndrome for that. I, I, I forgot the name. There is a syndrome for that. Um, so this, this, there, there are some people in this world, they can kind of look like five years old, even though they are 30 years old already. Yeah. So that is a form of genetic um, disorder. Yeah. And very much, very often, um, when you have this kind of genetic disorder, the lifespan is not that very long okay all right so you will look at here the the cell wall how the action of the auxin can make your cell wall bigger because we know right the moment you spray auxin the, the hormone your plants will just keep on budding and then grow how does it happen due to the action of the cell wall so you will see that the acidification of the cell wall it will start to elongate so this A here, this is um, the cells prepping to undergo elongation. So this is your plant cell. This is the zoom part of it. Yeah. And then this is the cell undergoing the active um, elongation. And this is when um, the cell has become fully elongated. We'll learn about this uh, in a bit detail when the time comes. Okay. This is just um, the idea. Can your cell do this? The human cell. Why not? Yeah, we don't. You don't have the cell wall. How are you going to acidify the cell wall? The only you have is your room wall. Too bad. Okay. All right. Yeah. The next lesson will be the signals and signals transduction. Transduction. It means changing from one form to another. Okay. From maybe from the. Uh, physical energy to the chemical energy yeah from one form to another that that is meant by the transduction it's it's pretty much like your phone where's my phone oh, your phone here your phone receiving signals right from the transmitter tower oh my phone got now this is your mobile ah. seven years nev never change why ah? Ooh, i got no message um, so these signals um, is actually in the form of 
light. Okay, travel from the transmitter tower. Doesn't matter, 3G, 4G, 5G. And then being received by your phone. And then your phone turn it into the electrical thing so that you can do all the things that you love to do with your phone. So that is the signal transduction. Because if it does not get transduced, the event that is supposed to happen is not going to happen. All right? Okay? Yeah. All right. So what do we have here? So these are the, uh, at the cellular levels, the things that can happen with the signaling thing. So there are three things that happen uh, with, the, with the cells involving this signaling thing. There is a reception when the receptors on the cell surface receive the signals. When you have a cell, on the surface of the cell, it's not empty. There are studded or Im embedded with various antenna. Think of it like many of the astro disk. And this antenna, they will do something the moment the right signals coming. Okay, it's very specific. So that is the reception phase of it. And then the moment the signal has been received, for example, that like here, so the light is the signal or the inducer. And this phytochrome is the receptor. So this phytochrome, when they receive the light signal, something will happen to it because it gets activated. Okay. So this phytochrome itself, it doesn't do the rest of the work. It will create secondary signal so that the next structure, such as enzyme or protein, can do the coming work. Kind of like, you know, running baton thing. You know, you pass the baton and then you kind of um, cause all the whole cascade to, to go on. So, and that is the transduction part because you have the second messenger produced and then this thing here, from here to here, can be many, many steps. As little as two, as many as 30, 40, 50, 100, more. Sometimes even, even scientists do not do, can, cannot be certain about this, okay? And eventually, it will reach the final destination, which is the response. Due to these signals, the, the final response is the transcription of a gene. Do you understand what is meant by transcription? So you have your gene. Your gene is sequence of DNA. So this sequence of DNA, before it can be turned on, it must be transcribed. Transcribed means to copy. It will be copied. So this is the strand, so it, that will be copied. So this, this copy will undergo the whole cascade of thing to eventually produce a protein. Then you got your mRNA and so on here. Yeah. So this is the response of it. So at the cellular level, Producing a specific protein is the response in the cell. But visually, something can very much happening as well. For example, in this here, the etiolation, greening response protein. Etiolate, you know etiolated etiolation? Etiolation. Um, this simply means pale or white or bleach. Your seedlings, when you germinate in the darkness, usually they look, is it green? It looks whitish, right? Yeah, that is called etiolation due to the lack of light. But the moment you bring your seedlings that you germinated, maybe you germinate your seedlings in the fridge, you bring to the light, the light got lots of blue light, right? So this blue light will cause a transcription factor one to be expressed. When gene is turned on, we call it the gene is expressed. Okay, so the product is usually a specific protein. 
this protein will do something else, various activities, to the point visually you can see that, oh, my, my pale seedlings now has become green. Yeah, yeah. Thank you to the blue light. So that's how the plants perceive it, okay? Yeah. And about the movement of signals in the plants, we can divide it into two, the short signaling and also the long distance signaling. So for the short uh, distance signaling, uh, the concept like the symplastic pathway, a proplastic pathway, and the transcellular or transmembrane pathway is very important, okay? So symplastic pathway utilizing the plasmodes mater. Plasmodes mater is the tunnel that connects between two cells, okay? You have two cells here, two cells here, two plant cells here, they are cemented, right? I just said earlier, there are cement, there are glue in between. Actually, the glue, sometimes it breaks off to form this tunnel. So this tunnel is called plasmo. Desmata is actually in the form of tubing, actually, this tube. Yeah, right in the middle of tube, there is a special structure called desmotubule. Desmotubule. Tubule. Biul. This decimal tubule is actually part of the cytoskeleton. Remember, you learned just now there are actin, microfilaments, tubulin, and stuff. Yes, some of them is actually connected to this. So they are all interrelated. Okay. Yeah. And what about the long distance signaling? <coughs> so that actually has to utilize. Um, the xylem and phloem, okay? So one signal happens in one place and then it will be transported to the other side of the intended organs of the plants, okay? All right, uh, so there is a xylem flow and also the phloem flow, okay? Xylem to transport what? Water, minerals, ion. Phloem? Sugar, yeah, sugar. Because sugar, um, there is a reason why xylem is dead. Phloem, phloem is a living cells. Xylem, it only requires osmosis and pressure, the bulk flow. Xyl uh, phloem, it deals with sugar against the concentration gradient. When it is against concentration gradient, it requires energy. And energy can only be provided by living things. That's why phloem cells, along the way, they are living. They are living because they are the one who will provide the pump to calm the sugar against the concentration gradient so it can reach wherever it needs to be. Right? Okay. Yeah. And after you have learned about the signals, we are going to focus on the signals of light. There are many signals that can come towards your way, but we are going to focus on light, okay? So you're going to see that for the lights, there are the kind of receptors in light. There are uh, photoreceptors, such as the phytochrome. So phytochrome is the uh, receptor for the red light, red, far red lights, okay? Now you have the cryptochromes. This is the blue light receptors. Uh, meant for circadian rhythm. Do you know circadian rhythm? Your biological clock, you have that too. You know, um, like um, when you wake up, even without your alarm buzzing off, yeah, or you need that, or you need a bomb to wake you up. So the things that you do regularly, even without some, somebody tell you to do it, or without you having to put a reminder on it, so that is your circadian rhythm. You get hungry at the same time of the day. You get angry at the same time of the day. Oh, that's, that's very rare. I don't know. You go, you go to the toilet at the same time of the day. So these are all part of the circadian rhythm. That's why people who travel far away from the home country, they will experience jet lag because the circadian rhythm just got messed up somehow. Okay? Why? You are traveling in the aeroplane. Do you get the blue light? No, you don't get the blue light. How the cryptochromes going to function very well, right? Okay, and then you got the phototropin. Phototropin also um, sends blue light, but for different um, reason that you're going to look. Okay, All right. So there are many events controlled by this 
photoreceptors, okay? Not only for the growth, but many events in plant, right? Yeah, and then we're going to learn about the floral initiation. Okay, this is to help with your experiment, okay? And you're going to see that the things that you learned before, the annual, the biennial, the perennial, there are actually um, tropical plants more concentrated on the annual and perennial. So our tropical plants, very seldom we deal with the biennial plants. So for your experiment, we use the biennial plants, okay? Yeah. And finally, we learn about, I think this is the last one. That's, that's already January. I should be stopping. Otherwise, I'm going to get the, the lowest G. Right. This is what? Ah, hello, Grandma. Have you learned this before? Plant senescence. Senescent, senescent, if you learn, learn senescent, aging. Not experiencing aging, learn about aging. Have you learned this before? Yeah, I'll tell you what, um, up, up to now, I have not known anybody teaching this, okay? Because who wants to, 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 to know about aging? The moment, the moment your plant is old and withered, they'll just plow the land. Nobody wants to care about this, right? But I think it's a good thing to learn so that there are things that actually you can do to your plants to somehow slow down the aging or to utilize the materials from the plant so that the re nutrient remobilization can be optimized, All right? So senescence, uh, the easy language is aging, All right? I've got two here. So this is the aging events that happens in plant cells and events that happens in the animal cells. Um, so what happens during aging? Things like cell shrinkage, membrane blabbing. You know membrane blabbing? Not blabbing, you talk non-stop. That's B-L-A-B. Blabbing. Oh. Blabbing. Blabbing means you um, forming appendages. Like, this is your plasma membrane, smooth like. When the plasma membrane is blabbing, it starts to form fingers and appendages like that. So this thing, the protrusion of the plasma membrane, this is called blabbing. Uh, blabbing. Blabbing. Okay, what else? Oh, sorry, I, sh I should have uh, uh, highlighted all these words, right? It's okay. Um, you need to learn a lot of words now, okay? This, this is why I want to give you exposure to this. There are many terminologies that will give rise to your new interest. Or you can explain things further because now you can Google the right words. You see? Stuff like this. What else? Um, oh, what's that? DNA lettering. Oh, um, do you know that? Have you done experiment gel electrophoresis? Have you done it? Have you done gel electrophoresis? I, I think that's something in, in biology usually. Have you done electrophoresis? Or everybody just online, just imagining things a lot since two years ago. Um, oh, this is, this is hard to explain if you have not, um, don't worry, don't worry. Um, it's, it's good because that actually deals with, I don't have the duster. Or did I throw it away? I think, look at me. Ah, it's here. DNA lettering. I think you know the word. Leathering, you know leather, the stairs. Um, so you have a technique in biology, it's called uh, electrophoresis. Electrophoresis. So this electrophoresis, 
you want to to separate your uh, DNA. It can be DNA, protein, or any macromolecules in, in your cell so that you know the sizing of the fragments. Okay. So let's say that you have a leaf. Okay. So this leaf, you extract the DNA. You extract. Then you got your, your DNA extraction. Extract of DNA. You need to know now the size of DNA that are present in your leaf size. So this extract, you kind of, there is, there is a small machine. Actually, it's a tray. So this machine is filled with a solution. There's a buffer solution. Buffer solution. And in the middle of this machine, there is a piece of agar. piece of agar. So this piece of agar, you can poke holes or wells. You put wells here, you put wells here, you put wells here, you put wells here. Right? Agar is porous, meaning that materials can go through it, which is very crucial in this technique. So this DNA extract of your leaf, you take some amount of it, you pipette it into this well fill the well into with this extract solution then this machine is actually connected to power source okay so you got the power so when you turn on this machine remember okay this agar is soaking in the buffer solution it will start to bubble up this one side of the machine is um i think negative one part is positive. When this thing is turned on, negative side will start to go to the positive side because different charges attract similar charges, repel. So when the movement of the charges coming this way, this will start to force your DNA extract to have a journey as well because the DNA also got charges. So this will cause the DNA to separate, which is going to be visible. The distance, whether they are going to separate more or less, it is depending on the size. Smaller size will reach at the end first. Bigger size will stay closer to the well. And this actually, you can know the kilo dalton or kilo basis, the size of your DNA. Remember, your DNA got double helix, right? Double helix. So one of these, pairing of this, for example, A pair with T, this is one base. We use kilo bases because this is a fragment, a collection of so many DNA of similar sizing. All right. Look at this thing. This look like leather. Leather. And this is called leathering. So coming back to the senescent cells, when the DNA is leathering, meaning that the DNA, instead of having a one long strand like this, they are now fragmented, fragmented into various sizes. If you were to run it across the gel electrophoresis, you can get leathering patterns like this. Get it? Get it? Yeah. Too bad. I don't, uh, our uh, lab is not equipped to do this. Otherwise, I can show you how to do this. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. Then what else? I'll, I'll just help you with the uh, terminologies. I cannot see. Okay. 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 Cy cytochrome release. Oh, cytochrome release is the dissociated dissociation of the photoreceptor cytochrome. It's on the surface cell, cell surface, and then they kind of, you know, move about. Um, protease activation. Protease is the enzyme to break down protein. Increase in ROS. ROS is actually reactive oxygen species. There are many types of ROS, okay? It can be uh, singlet oxygen, oxygen that you know, oxygen O2, right? If the oxygen is alone and lonely, 
that is reactive oxygen species okay uh, hydrogen peroxide is another type of re uh, reactive oxygen species okay in uh, decrease in atp you know atp uh, your energy molecules so when you are old you don't have lots of atp and finally um release of the damp so this is just the um chemicals um, um, um in the in in the cell to to signals that the cell has come about to the end okay amp is the adenos adenosine monophosphate um i don't think i'm going to go into detail with this this is actually more relevant to um medical people okay there is a special pathway because this um a m p k metabolism <clears throat> remember your 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 grandma your aunties at 70 and 80s do nothing but playing mahjong you know and gossiping with uh, with the neighbors why because the mitochondria is that way right if you activate if you activate this a m p k pathway you can make uh, grandma be active again Maybe you 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 uh you got a new account very soon. Hey, grandma is active. She did something. I shouldn't tell more about this. this yeah, something some, 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 something might happen. You see, uh, even though I am plant scientist, but I don't mind learning about all the medical thing. That kind of helpful in in my own research uh, group. Okay. You have a good understanding about the organisms you can do very very interesting experiments that no one has ever done it before and it can give rise to a lot of new discovery and knowledge right interdisciplinary just because you are plant scientists doesn't mean that you you don't have to know about about all these um uh, medical and human stories right okay yeah Oh yeah, this is just the stages um, of, of um, uh, senescence, okay? Senescence doesn't mean that it can happen to the whole plant, okay? It can happen in certain parts of, of the organs only. So there's a whole plant senescence, top senescence, deciduous senescence, and progressive senescence. So which senescence are you having now? Are you senescing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. How do you know you are senescing? Are you yellowing? Yet? A hey, baby's got wrinkles as well. So what? What actually wrinkles? What actually wrinkles? That. If that, it will fall apart. Wrinkles actually is um. So you see, under your skin, there is two types of protein that hold everything together: collagen and elastin. So when number one, when the amount of collagen and elastin has gone down, that will cause wrinkles. And second thing, your collagen has undergone a, a, a reaction. It's called glycation. Glycation. Collagen and elastin is protein, right? It's protein. So when protein kind of combined with sugar because you you like coke so much you eat that non-stop you keep on drinking sugar 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 now your body is um basically diabetic right so when your skin not only that the collagen and elastin has reduced but on top of that it they have undergone glycation meaning that they have fused with the sugar they will start to lose integrity okay and with this knowledge you kind of know if you consume less sugar then you will have fewer wrinkles you stay younger for longer yay who says that you need to buy expensive collagen stop eating, stop eating sugar your body can make sugar anyway even if you don't consume sugar there is a process in our body is called gluconeogenesis your body can produce glucose on its own even if you don't eat sugar so all this added sugar actually not necessary it's just a drug to make you an addict 
Right. So? You know what? You just listen. I still want this. <laughs> all right. Okay. That's all. All right. Okay. okay. So I hope you have um, received a good amount of overview what the rest of the semester, what it's going to look like. I think maybe for the next lesson, we can jump straight to the genome structure and expression because um, the story in the cell architecture, I can fuse with the genome story as well. Okay, so that can actually save time. <coughs> um, any question? Yeah. How is that so? How is it xylem that when it is a living cell? It used it used to be a living uh, co component. Xylem, all structure in the plant used to be living. I'll show you why. Uh, no, not that one. Oh, yeah, this one. Yeah. It started out as, as a tubing. Okay? It's living. It's living. But this is what I want to, you to learn, this plant senescent. Look at that. Programmed cell death. The plant deliberately, purposely kill off the xylem so that it is only a conduit now. The same thing happened to you while, while you, you are a fetus. You know, that happened to you as well? If programmed cell death, or the fancy name is apoptosis, didn't happen, when you are born, your hand looks like a duck feet. Well, because of this programmed cell death that happened to xylem, now happened to you, when you are born, the cells in between here died, and then you got the cleavage opening. And this is apoptosis, a program cell death. Your genome, chromosome recipe, purposely kills the cells in between here so that you have digits. For this plant, it's the same. They purposely kill the cell so that it becomes the conduit. If it's living, it will interfere with the movement of ions and minerals. Okay? Because living things is very fussy. Right, they will only allow certain things to be permeable, right? And it will be metabolically expensive as well. So just have it as a conduit or piping. That's all you need. Look at your house, the piping system. Does it require electricity? Your piping, you know, the piping, the plumber. Does it require electricity? I, I know I got so many electric, I would just want to put electric on it. Is it necessary? No. Just make it that, right? So some structure, no need to be living. They just need to be as a conduit or channel, right? Okay, does that answer your question? <clears throat> the story is pretty much like your bones. Your bones, osteocyte, after some time, it's dead. And then you got buried. 3,000 years later, people found you as well with the pharaoh. Do you still have your skin? Do you still have your eyes? What about your bones? Yes, because ample minerals has been deposited while it's living. And then the cells condensation has happened greatly, like the scler sclerenchyma cells. They have become uh, fibrous, gritty and also toughen highly lignified that's the word actually lignified yeah so super lignification happened so that's why after the xylem even now it is dead it's not called it's not going to cause the collapse of the entire system they stay that way pretty much like the bone yeah look at the pharaoh you still got a bone right See the pharaoh. Smile. Can you smile? Got any leaves on a tongue? No. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay.
Iya, iya. Ya, endo endo membrane, ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. That's why they have these organelles, mitochondria and chloroplast has its own membrane, has its own DNA. That is why. And in fact, the the membrane composition kind of not, not similar with the plasma membrane outside as well. They are kiasu. They want to do things on their own. Right. Yeah. This modification can happen due to mutation as well. That's why sometimes, even without radiation, the regular cell will mutate on its own. Somatic variation over the generation, mutation happens. And then you got variety, natural variety. No humans interfere whatsoever. It, it happens naturally. Thank you to mitochondria and chloroplast. It can happen because they can, they can govern their own nu uh, nucleus duplication. Uh, no, sorry, uh, DNA nu uh, duplication and so on. All right. Okay. Mm. Yeah. All right. Happy. Any question? Any question? Any question? You want to G bottom me? <laughs> Anybody want to drop me now? Are you okay, this side? Not okay? So how are you doing? How are you doing? Can, 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 can you follow the lesson? Uh, what? There what? are so many new words. Yes, there yes. Are new words. Actually, this thing is not new in the books. It's, it's just because the education system that you have before did not touch on this. But actually, to be a good physiologist, these are the fundamentals. This is why I highlight this thing. I show this to you so that you have exposure, you are aware. Oh, this is the thing that I should know now. I must know this now. Otherwise, in the near future, you are not going to be a good scientist because you do not have a good fundamental. These are all basic fundamentals. Okay? It's okay. First time looks difficult. Two times looks difficult. Five times, you, you remember already. Okay? <coughs> all right. Okay? If you get scared, so many, like your friends, many new words, many new terminologies. Hi, 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 Majo later. Um, repetition is the key. Okay? Repetition is the key. Oh, you can play Majo with me. I won so many times. Kong! <laughs> um, repetition is the key. You learn one time, it's going to be difficult because your brain still has not induce the formation of new brain cell okay the moment it has formed the new brain cell it start hooking with each other the brain cells it will become easier all right okay i have the book with me you can use any book okay not just just uh at the book i'm holding now do you see i'm opening any book how do i know all of these things just just read just read things just read things because I, I have been dealing with this for how many years now? Almost 20 years? Oh, very close to my table now. <laughs> a long time ago. Um, when did I enter UPM? Huh? Yeah, yeah, almost 20 years ago. Yeah. 18. 18. Ooh. If, if, if 28, I wouldn't be teaching you now. I would travel the world and, and have all the fun to myself. It's too bad, right? Huh? Yeah. Um, that's something we can decide later because I have not, you see, with SMP, the moment I have entered the marks percentage, it cannot be reversed. 
So it's not smart to do it in the beginning. Let's have agreement. We, yeah, you can have fun, whatever you want. Have agreement first, see how, how people are doing, because I can play around with the percentage weightage. There are things I can control to help you with your scoring and mark. I just cannot help you with the final, just that. Other things, you know, you can go with me. Yeah. So the key is, don't annoy me, make me happy. Simple as that. All right. Okay. I think that's all. Um, I just um, want to spend another half an hour just to tell you about uh, what time now? Okay. Just half an hour to tell about the experiment. Okay. So I'm not going to tell you about the experiment. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're not going to do experiment. We'll just um, want to brief you about the experiment that will take place starting next week. Uh, okay. I think I'll let Do you, do, you, do you want to use this? Oh, whatever. Okay. Um, ah, it's been. You want? Do you want mine? Uh, no. Oh, okay. So the mine. Oh, can you rub rub the board? Wait. Rub, rub the board. Can you rub? Okay. Please pay attention. Okay, because this is going to be your mini project. Uh, 
find the values of sigma. So sigma one to two, which is solely for their alignment, but in three different timing, which is at sunrise, midday, and during the dusk are sundown. So this for these three treatments, we will just apply for them, just solely for their opposite time, but not solely for the lighter. Okay, so for treatment four to six, which is a uh, combination, combination of foliar fertilizer and soil fertilizer. And now we have seven and nine. We have uh, three control. Which one is the seven? Treatment seven is a uh, conventional way. Which the end rate is based on the fertilizer label. Which are uh, uh, now farmers commonly will do. Okay, so for treatments F and treatment 9, which is in different and like okay, why why would you do this? Okay, so this is to uh set up the treatment one to two the solid fertilizer and the combination of fertilizer because the most fertilizer rate with different function and with different angles. So to make the uh to make it the uh the more clear, the element must be the same. If not the results are uh, might be due to different patterns. Okay, so uh these are basically the treatments and when do we start uh for now I haven't decided yet when we start how to use the The faster I think we need. So this experiment will um, carry out in last week. Uh, I'm not sure. Have you been there? I just you know the bridge towards uh, the animal science. Yeah. Just around there. In front there is two glass house, and then in front of the glass house there are one open size. So I'm going to do this experiment there. Okay, so for the activity to be involved, now uh, I'm going to need to go to the uh, the left direction, and then secondly, the planting and the planting of the part of plastic tree. Thirdly, treatment of patient, and lastly, is the data collection. So, data collection has two parts, which are the physiological data and also the economical data. So, uh, this is the exciting part of the physiological data. So, actually, we will be doing this uh, a very sophisticated, so we call it treatment to hack the physiological data. What, what basically we get? Uh, so we will take a photosynthesis rates, data structures, uh, and what of it will start converting to intensity for the definitions. So uh, this uh I want to ask you guys to about the light for light for machine to practice the work of the problem. The light light for photosynthesis actually which is this structure. Uh, um, this entry one used to uh, uh, to measure plant photosynthesis uh, regardless of the direction of that both of them in the measure. So uh, yeah. this this machine uh is uh the development just take out the photosynthesis so what kind of methods is the ice aeration, the amount of sample pressure ratio. And then we will do some so let, let me look on the channel. So what are these? I don't want to look at this. I'm going to take a look. 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 Nanti budak-budak dah bagi tahu kat engkau lah. Sebab orang tak beli lagi. Tak nak kena oh, give it. Sebab dah sempat dah habis dulu. Hmm. Oh, okay. Nanti apa-apa, tu guna saya lah. Ah. So, kita guna sini je lah. 
Enggak boleh. Oke. Kalau lupa sih betul. Saya oke. Kalau semester ni kenapa banyak orang pergi beli? Eh, sekiranya kuliah pun macam tu. So, uh, this is just a brief, uh, just very brief, uh, how is the explanation? Uh, we will go on to the text progress after uh, in seven parts uh, for the right now. So, this is just a simple text up for everyone. So, I guess that is all. Uh, you want to ask me about the grammar? So now we have some to Do you understand what's going on? Yeah. You want me to repeat? No. Yay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Do you want me to repeat or not? Ke tak payah? Okay, I'll repeat in five minutes. So you will be doing, you are going to deal with two mini experiments. The first experiment is to understand how the foliar application will have any impacts on the crop of okra by changing the application timing just that yeah of course you're going to have many combination of the treatment some with granular fertilizer and uh, folia some pure folia some without folia that's just the details of it but that's the concept because we know different time of the days will cause different metabolism activity of the plants okay. and the moment plants receive nutrition during this time will have impact on its own internal metabolism and we want to know at the end what's going to happen as simple as that okay if you're not familiar if you if you if you wonder what this folia is all about remember plants have organs and some of these organs can be the entry points for nutrients to get in. Usually, we apply fertilizer and the plants take the nutrients up using the roots organs. That's the common one. Everybody do that. Right? Now, you get to learn. Actually, there is another entry of the plants, which is the folia, through the stomata. And see what happens. Okay. For the second experiment, this is to give you exposure about the biennial plant. Our country do not produce onions. Yeah. And there are many issues actually if you want to start an industry. However, if we can answer a small question in creating onion industry, which is the flowering induction and seeds production, that is actually going to be a good platform to start the whole onion industry for Malaysia. It's just one question. So for the second experiment, the onion experiment, you are going to be dealing with two types of onions, the red onion and also the shallot. Okay, the smaller one, we don't call it an onion, we call it shallot, all right? These two um, onions or alliums, allium is the genus of it, you're going to treat it with vernalization. Vernalization is the cold treatment. This is not a common concept for tropical agriculture, okay? So, vernalization is actually the artificial cold treatment that we're going to give to the onions to initiate flowering. The onion has meristem inside of it, right? This meristem still undifferentiated into floral meristem. It is still pretty much vegetative. So, you will learn later by giving ample amount and right amount of cold treatment, you can cause this meristem of the onion to turn into floral meristem. 
Yeah. So you have two amount of vernalization in this case. You have the one week and also the two weeks. Okay. After each time has ended, we will transplant straight to the farm and then maintain just that. And then we see uh, after, after a few weeks. Let's see after one month what happens. Okay. And then you can do your report. Yay. That's all. All right. Okay. Not to worry. Um, confusion is known to happen greatly in my class. For some reason, I do not know. Am I confusing you? Yeah. She said yes. Yes. <laughs> to this side, I am the, the down G. Do you understand? Uh, a, little. a little. A little. A little. How can uh, we facilitate your understanding? Um, do you need Google Translate? Yeah. Yes. Okay. She needs Google Translate. <laughs> okay. So this is the experiment. Two experiments. Yeah. Okra experiment and onion experiment. This for the folia spray. See plants okay or not? The second experiment put in the fridge. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, what were the parameter of the because the first uh, uh, the first objective uh, is to determine the optimum timing mm. then different time mm. and this you want to know the response uh group group groups and years response uh, this mm. treatment and this what's the entire parameter we want to choose this we will know towards the end we can decide as you learn. As you learn the lecture, the lessons, we will decide what parameters that you can measure. There are things you can measure without equipment, like ruler, you know, height, weight. That can be done straight away. Yeah. Because accumulate that sub substance cause damage, damage the growth to mm. growth and uh, uh, developing the uh, mm. So uh, we want to use this treatment can increase this uh, ROS effect. Yeah, we we might not be able to measure the ROS. We will see what the labs is able to give. Yeah, that decision will come in a few weeks' time. What is possible? There are things that you learn in theory, but you are not able to do during the experiment. Like I said, this is to give you exposure. Yeah. To do experiments for all of the lessons that you have learned, that is not possible. That takes a very long time. So we only select certain experiments only. Yeah, to accommodate what we have in the lab. Yeah, and also the timing. You only have 14 weeks, right? Okay, if you want to do all the roasting, actually that's possible, but very expensive and takes a long time to do it. My, my, my research, uh, in, uh, also I want to uh, bring some stimulants uh, to the plants to and the one uh, it has the tolerance of drought. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, so, so maybe we for some antioxidants, okay, antioxidants right. and gene activity mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. photosynthesis mm -hmm. and morphology, maybe uh, including some genes expression. Oh, so, okay. so I choose this cause. Uh, yeah. So I want to learn some. Okay. Things. Those things you are going to learn during the lessons. Okay. But to do the experiments, we are not able to do the gene expression experiment. However, you can discuss with your supervisor how to do the experiment because you have learned the fundamental, the theory about this, you have learned during the class. Now you have some knowledge, right? You have some knowledge? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Okay, all right. So let's see. Um, so learn 
and then if you want to do something specific you can discuss that with your supervisor because one lab is not possible to do certain things but other labs are possible okay yeah for the sake of lesson we're just going to do simple experiment simple experiment but you can understand it properly there is no point to learn many things but people do not understand okay to give exposure remember this is to give exposure to give you a fundamental so that each of you not just you other students can do their own research and experiment because now they have different fundamentals right okay okay can you do that are you okay all right okay yeah all right i'll try not to go as fast okay so that you can catch up but this is a fundamental thing okay all right we need google translate yeah report is individual report you want individual can oh. Oh.